HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. Diane is a leading small business development and leadership coach, author, and speaker who is passionate about sharing valuable ideas, tips, and techniques with business professionals worldwide. Diane brings you the world's experts and gurus in all things business, whether it's sales, structure, social media, planning, or plateauing, guests bring their expertise and energy to each episode. When growing your business is your focus, Accelerate Your Business Growth is the show to listen to. Got a topic or guest suggestion? Let Diane know. The goal is to make sure you have the information you need to move your business forward. Thanks for joining us. Settle in and enjoy. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Today's podcast is sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken audio entertainment and information. Listen to audiobooks whenever and wherever you want. Get a free book when you sign up for a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash business growth. Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast continues to enjoy inclusion on lists of the best podcasts to listen to. This is due in great part to um, the wonderful guests who join me here to share their expertise and knowledge so that all of you can get what you need so that you can do better things in your business. Today is no different. Today my guest is Scott Carter. Scott is a successful executive, author, and much sought after voice of reason and practicality in the business world. With 30 years of experience in scaling startups into industry leaders and growing Fortune 500 businesses, Scott knows how to make money, build on it, and protect it. He's been the CEO of several large private financial companies and has held other senior management positions in publicly held insurance companies. In spite of his great success, he has never forgotten his humble beginnings. Thanks so much for joining me today, Scott. Thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to it, Diane. Me too. Um, We're going to be talking about a couple of things, um, blockchain and cryptocurrency, and these are things that I think um, make people's heads spin, so (laughs) 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 it's really something. So I want to start with blockchain, and I'm wondering if you can give us the um, layman's uh, definition and how you see it affecting business owners in the future. Okay, uh, I'll give it a go. Uh, it is. It can be um, complex, to be honest with you, but I, I think that I've explained it enough to people that, uh, in my view, the best way is to explain what blockchain is by example instead of a definition. Um, you know, I'll start with the definition and let everybody's eyes roll in the back of their head, but it, <laughs> you know, it's, it's basically distra- described as a distributed 
peer-to-peer ledger platform that enables transactions to occur in a decentralized format. So that's sort of the mind-numbing definition, if you will. Uh, but, okay. the best, but the best way to think about it is, uh, and I'm going to paint a picture here. Let's say that, Diane, you and I are in a, uh, a school auditorium, and there are a thousand people in the auditorium watching us. Okay, and okay. I'm on the stage, and I ask you to come up on the stage with the program guide for the presentation. So all thousand people are watching you and I on the stage in this auditorium, and I pull twenty dollars out of my pocket, a twenty dollar bill, and you have your show guide, and I say to you, Diane, will you sell me that show guide for twenty dollars? And you say yes, and I turn to the auditorium, everybody watching, I say, do you see this $20 bill? Everybody says yes. Does anybody disagree that this is my $20 bill? Does anybody dissent that, that it's not really mine? No dissension. I hand the $20 bill to you and you hand me the show guy. And I look back to the audience of a thousand people and I say, does anybody disagree that this transaction actually occurred? That Diane sold me the show guide and I gave her $20 bills. Is there any dissenters? No dissenters. Okay, so this transaction is complete. She took my $20 and I took her program guide. Everybody agrees. So blockchain technology is essentially that transaction. And except for a thousand people watching, you have a thousand computer servers watching around the country. And when, or around the world, really. And when this transaction occurs, if all 1,000 servers don't agree because they've all got our data decentralized, if, if there is any dissension at all in those 1,000 of servers, the transaction won't go through. That's the idea of decentralized. And there is no uh, uh, dispute about I am who I am and that I've got my $20 bills because it's on the blockchain platform. Now, the reason why that's so significant, Diane, or, or let me pause there. Maybe it, it sounded like you might have had a question. No, no, I was just going to ask you why. So what does a business do with that? Because Well, here's what a business what? Here's what a business. Yeah, because like, what do they need that for? I, okay, go right. ahead. Right, what do they need that for? Well, here's yeah. why it's a game changer from a, from a business standpoint. For you and I to do that transaction, if you were anywhere else, except in the actual room with me. We could not do that transaction. I couldn't mail cash in the mail. Uh, you would not know where the money's coming from. I would need a bank account, and I would need a bank that validates who I am. I would need a, the ability to wire money to you, I would, or write a check, which requires a bank account, and a structure centralized to validate who I am, to validate who you are, to have a bank account on your your side and, a, and all the necessary institutions to validate that this transaction is legitimate. On the blockchain platform, there is no need for any of that. That you could be literally 5,000 miles away from me and it's as if you're in the same, same room enabling us to do a peer-to-peer -peer transaction without any intermediary validating who we are. Because our information, our money, all of our previous transactions that have occurred digitally are all on this blockchain platform that is open for everybody to see, every ledger. Not see our name, but see our yeah. you know, wallet. Yeah. And so when you think about how complex it is to do transactions today, something simple, like if it's after two o'clock, I can't wire money as a business. Uh, well, that's not necessarily needed anymore. I could pay oh. on Sunday evening. Uh, if it is, you know, something where it's over a certain amount of money, you might have a level of authority, especially in commercial transactions, where a bank's got to approve a wire or approve a, a sending of money. That's not required. You, you could have any number of situations that you can think of where peer-to-peer -peer transactions streamline it, immediate, and uh, accurate and encrypted that is not available today. And that, that to me is probably the, for businesses and for individuals, the biggest game changer. How in the world are banks gonna let this happen? 
that, well, they're going to do what they always do. They're going to talk it down until they can catch up and uh, control it. And then they're going to offer digital currencies like everybody else. I mean, <laughs> JP Morgan has just announced that they now have their own digital currency called Circle, which is a stable coin backed by the dollar. Uh, you know, the Fed is, is looking at this very intently. And it's no secret that banks and, and federal reserves would like to see physical cash eliminated. I mean, this, is, this plays into their, their, their playbook. Oh. Because, look, physical cash is the biggest exposure that banks have, a run on the bank. If there is yeah. no physical money to take out, this actually is a benefit long term for control if they are controlling you know the currency but the the real change in again this is just my view i think the real change is the fact that it puts the control of our money back to the people the idea of something being borderless or not centralized in control and that the people really control the value of their money is critical right now. I mean, it's no, no surprise that uh, Bitcoin, which was the first one, Bitcoin and blockchain, it came out of the 2008 financial crisis. And uh, your, your uh, listeners may not know this, but we still don't know who created it. Uh, really? it yeah, it was created by a pseudonym, Satoshi Nakamoto. And we have no idea who that is today. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Yeah. <laughs> is it a government? Is it an institution? Is it right? Oh my God! Nakamoto put out the white paper for Bitcoin and blockchain that has created this, and we don't even know who it is. That's incredible. I know. Wow. And, and since then, you have now almost three hundred billion dollars of market valuation. Uh, over 1,700 cryptocurrencies and probably three or four different blockchain platforms. It is expanding tremendously. And there, are, even though it's new, in, in my view, in the life cycle of change, it is, it's created tremendous wealth for many. Yeah, and is that real wealth? Well, it is right now. I mean, the, the fact is, is that uh, if I use Bitcoin as an example, and this is just going to make your listeners sick because I know it makes me sick. But if you had just purchased $1,000 worth of Bitcoin seven years ago in 2011, okay? So you invested $1,000 in Bitcoin in 2011. As of today, the price today, I think, is around $6,300. You know how much you would have? No. $20 million. Jeez, really? I know. Had I invested $1,000 in Microsoft 43 years ago when it came public, I would have 500,000. So to, wow. to, to give you a perspective of the wealth that has been created, it is, it's uh, mind numbing. And it's not surprising. I mean, early adopters of technology, they tend to make the most money. Yeah. And, uh, but, but this is something uh, as a technology and a platform, it's very real. Blockchain is very real. The cryptocurrencies are still shaking out on who the winners and losers will be over time. But this will fundamentally change not only how we conduct commerce, Diane, I want to be quick to point out that many large companies are already using blockchain to, to uh, track data, meaning Walmart, for example, they use blockchain to track the lettuce flow in their system, as silly as that sounds. Just one product, lettuce, because it, it goes bad so easily. So because centralized data is cumbersome and clunky, whereas decentralized blockchain on Lettuce can be tracked throughout the chain immediately, it begins to change how you move data and information around in a decentralized way, as well as currency. So how do you ensure that the data is accurate and not, you know, not planted if it's not i mean i get the not centralized but how do you know that it's that it's accurate genuine well yeah. well one to get to get the transactions or to get the information on the system it has to be accurate once it's in the blockchain platform 
it cannot be changed. It cannot be manipulated. Oh. Okay, it cannot, it's encrypted and it's decentralized. So you might be savvy as a hacker to, not, to, to log into a server and hack data, but you can't, you can't hack a thousand of them or 10,000 of them. And so the reality is today with centralized information and data, it's why we're having all these problems. It's why, you know, the credit agencies lost, you know, 30 million of our accounts or Facebook or what, because the data is centralized. And then once you hack into their server, you've got the goods. Yeah. Whereas on a blockchain decentralized ledger, you never have the goods because it is distributed. And that's pretty powerful. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. I see that. Okay, so so you so you do you think that cyber currency is really here to stay? That it's not going to do the, you know, the bubble bursting like we had with the dot coms. I think it's here to stay. I think that um, because cyber currency, uh, distributed ledger technology, I think the blockchain platform is a leap forward in technology and how we conduct commerce and transfer data. I think that you're going to see uh, some winners and losers in cryptocurrency. And I, I didn't say it before, but blockchain, it's like the plumbing, okay? Nobody gets really okay. excited about blockchain, but that's the real goods. The cryptocurrencies are the method in which data or currency moves on the blockchain. And those could be successful or not successful. Bitcoin was the original, but there is ether. There are so many cryptos right now that as they shake out and determine value, who knows who the winners and losers are going to be. And there, therein lies the investment risk factor uh, for, for individuals to say, you know, well, which, which do I own or which do I pick? But, wow. okay, they're, because they're like anything new, there are some some that make sense that, and some that don't. And when, when you get investments in a manic state, like, mm -hmm. you know, like, like cryptocurrencies uh, were last year, you can have some, some people that, that get stung. I mean, Bitcoin was at $19,000 in December of last year. And today it's at 6,400. Wow. So if you jumped in then, you, you're not very happy about this. Right. But the technology <laughs> is not going to go away. Uh, and, and the reason why is it provides a solution to things that are very, um, very hard to solve. It's starting in the most extreme cases, if you think about it just purely as a currency. Uh, Venezuela, who inflated their currency away to having no value, uh, like Zimbabwe and some other countries, well, Venezuela now in a crisis mode just went to cryptocurrency as their currency, 100% backed by oil. So they introduced a new currency to create stability by saying, we will back it by the oil assets we have as a country. And as a resident of that country, you can conduct transactions in what they call the Petra, which is their digital currency. So it begins to provide a replacement in, for currencies in countries or in institutions where uh, the currency has been devalued so much that, that it's become worthless. There, wow. Yeah, well, therein lies the concern long-term of investors. And, and in my opinion is why it's got staying power because as of today, our currencies really across the world are being manipulated through overprinting and devaluation to try to pay for debts and programs that we can't afford. And right. eventually that's going to be, uh, you know, a millstone around our neck and there will have to be some sort of uh, alternative or replacement. I don't know if it'll be cryptocurrencies, but it's not out of the realm. Okay. Okay. So what, how does it, I guess maybe I'm, maybe you said this and I missed it. So I apologize if I'm asking you to repeat something, but how does um, it impact entrepreneurs and business owners? I mean, so let's talk about the small guys, 
Right. Well, let's, let's use me as an example. You know, I have, okay. a, I have a, a couple of small businesses. I'm in the precious metals investment business. And uh, individuals contact me if they want to diversify their portfolio into physical assets uh, as a portion of their investment strategy. And I've been doing okay. this for 10 or 12 years. And, you know, when you buy, and I'm in a business where you buy a physical asset and either I ship it to you and you put it in your safe or your safety deposit box, or I arrange storage for you. And, you know, these transactions uh, are, I mean, they've been going on for hundreds of years. What is happening in my business right now is that uh, physical gold is looked at as a, it's a, like a relic. Very few individuals own actual physical gold. That it's been sort of put aside to this, you know, remnant investment. It's a, an old world investment that's not needed. That's sort of the psychology, if you will. It only gets, sees the light of day when there's panic and fear and, you know, you know blood in the street. Um, and, and so, you know, gold's got a bit, gold and silver have had a bit of an identity crisis. You know, you've got to convince someone that says, well, why not just invest in ETFs or stocks? Or you've got to say, well, no, this is real money. This is the real McCoy. There is no liability. When you buy gold, there is no counterparty risk, you know, as an example. So in my business, and it's, it's been astounding, when I start to talk about the fact that I could issue, and I, I have uh, created and issue a cryptocurrency that's 100% backed by gold, individuals, huh. individuals perk up and say, now, wait a minute, are you telling me that I could buy $10,000 worth of your Trident gold, which is our you know, cryptocurrency, and it's 100% backed by the price of gold, you know, unless you're fee I charge them a fee you know, less your fee. Yeah. I said, yes. And, and here's how it's played out in my business, Diana, and it might impact and in, in, in your own listeners that are on, entrepreneurs. So I have individuals that call me that have wealth and they'll say, now, right now, if I wanted to take my wealth with me on an airplane, I can take $10,000. That's it. It's just, that's limited by law. But what you're okay. telling me is if I buy Trident gold from you, let's say I buy a million dollars of Trident gold from you, You've got it backed by gold in storage, and I've got digital currency on my digital wallet. And now if I jump on a plane with my digital wallet, and let's say I fly to the Cayman Islands, and I call you, Scott, from my bank, and I say, Scott, I want to I transfer back to you $700,000 worth of Trident, and you'll wire me $700,000 worth of money into my bank account wherever I am on the planet. And I said, yes. And that was a game changer. Now I have, uh, as a customer, the message is, I have my wealth with me wherever I am, any time of the day or night, anywhere on the planet. It's wow. back by an asset. And now I see the um, sexiness, if I could use that word, of owning gold again. It's, it's, right. it's like when... Um, uh, you would understand this. I don't know if all your listeners, it's like, like when Mick Fleetwood met Stevie Nicks, you know, they, separately, they were terrible, right? But yeah. together as Fleetwood Mac, they were incomparable. Well, gold with blockchain and cryptocurrency combined is a formidable alternative to wealth, to decentralized, to uh, worldwide distribution and an alternative way to hold your currency and your money. And so that has fundamentally changed my business model. All of a sudden now, wow. I have a worldwide customer base because I don't have to ship physical gold to Japan. Somebody can buy Trident for me, I put it, the gold in my storage account here, and they have it as if they were buying gold. And I've just now expanded a hundredfold my business opportunity. Right. That's crazy. So, you know, when you think about any investor that's an entrepreneur, maybe they've got online sales uh, and, you know, they've got whatever they're selling, books, what have you. This will be a big change for them, a positive change if they think through strategically. Okay. Can you expand on that? Sure. Uh, so, 
I gave you an example of a client in my business. Here is a yeah. client. This is a B2B client. Uh, it's very difficult for businesses, some businesses, to, uh, to streamline the payment process for the customers. They're, maybe they're predetermined to be uh, high-risk businesses. I'll use any online retailer. A merchant account, meaning a credit card processor, Visa, what have you. If you're an online retailer, they feel that uh, you know, you're going to have a high degree of chargebacks. Uh, you're going to have uh, you know, loss of product, et cetera. So they charge you two things. They require a big reserve on your transactions uh, that's held in reserve for while you're in business. It could be anywhere up to 10%, meaning that if you do a you know, million dollars in sales in a month, you've got $100,000 sitting in reserve that you don't get back until you unwind the business. Uh, and then the, on top of that, they'll charge you anywhere from three and a half to 5% merchant fee to conduct your transactions to do it in credit card. That's a lot of money to a small business that's tied up. The, the, the reserve is in working capital and the merchant fee is actually direct expense. Now, let's introduce cryptocurrencies. These, mer the, these retailers, the online company is coming to me and saying, can I send my customer to you to buy Trident or any other token, but let's use my token, to buy Trident from you. That's where their credit card transaction occurs. Now, because I've got physical gold, there are no chargebacks. If there is a chargeback, I just unwind the transaction if there's buyer remorse. So they buy Trident from me, okay? And now they've got Trident at a value backed by gold that they can conduct commerce with the online retailer. So then they can transfer tokens to XYZ retailer to buy their online product. And the retailer accepts a cryptocurrency. It's not a bank transaction. It's not a merchant transaction. It's a transfer of a token. And now they have eliminated the reserve that they have to hold. They have eliminated the merchant fee. And then every day or every week, they just transfer those tokens back to me for unwind and I wire money to their bank account. It has greatly improved the cash flow of these businesses just in merchant transactions alone. Yeah. No Does that sure. example make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you for that. Because when you think about, uh, you know, a lot of businesses are deemed, you know, uh, you can't do business with them. Um, or a lot of businesses are in cash businesses. Or a lot of businesses like, um, I'm in Utah, and there are a lot of MLMs here. It could be anything from New Skin to uh, Herbal, you know, wherever. Yeah. Businesses have a very difficult time with merchants. And, uh, and this is just a very simple and valuable solution for them and on a small scale that enables them to kind of get out of that whole chargeback um, customer dispute because they're accepting uh, a, a, you know, a, a token instead of actually taking a credit card payment. Wow. That's okay. I, I, Truly appreciate that example. I get it. Thank you. That, yeah. that is great. But yeah. I do have a question. Sure. Which is, okay, so, so let's use that example again. So the, um, the person who ends up getting the cryptocurrency, then how do they like cash it in anywhere? Or do they have to know that you are the one who's holding the, the whatever it's backed by. Yeah, well, they don't have to cash it in. They can transfer it as money to the retailer. Wow. Oh. So let's say you've got an online store and you're selling a product. Okay. And you, you see my, my token, Trident Gold, it's 100% backed by gold. And you and I have a, 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 you know, an agreement that says, any Trident Gold you accept as payment, I, I accept back from you and I wire the cash to you uh, as the business owner. It's not a, you know, it, it's a, it's just a wire transaction. You're transferring the token. Oh. I'm selling the gold. And I'm wiring the money back to you. So all you have to do as a 
as a retailer is say, I will accept Trident or Bitcoin or whatever current crypto you want as payment. And so then the customer who has purchased the, the digital currency, all they do is go into their digital wallet and transfer it to your digital wallet for payment. It's like cash, only it's outside the banking system. Okay, 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 okay. And that is a very powerful way to, to do it because again, you have, um, you know, you're, the, the person has to actually pay for the cryptocurrency and are on the grid, if you will, that they bought it and it's in their wallet. The, the transaction can occur from anywhere. This is another really valuable uh, point for entrepreneurs. You know, there are a lot of problems in taking international transactions because yeah. of a credit card or this or that. Well, in this situation, the, again, using my token, Trident has the same value everywhere on the planet because it's backed by gold. So you have no um, fiat currency, uh, you know, adjustment based on, you know, the, the reserve adjustment. You have no valuation issue and you have immediate acceptance of the payment because it's not going through what we have had to do for the last 60 or 70 years. And it's only because of this quantum leap in technology called blockchain that we're unable to do this. I see. This is fascinating. Okay. I, I, I got to take a quick sponsor break. Okay. <laughs> and, then I, and then I want to continue. Um, Accelerate Your Business Growth Podcast is happy to be sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken digital audio entertainment and information. They have over 150,000 titles to choose from, and you can listen to them on any device, including whatever you're hearing us on right now. And if you sign up at our link, which is audibletrial.com slash businessgrowth, you get one free audiobook and a one-month trial of the service. Some examples of books you can listen to on audible.com are Seven Stories Every Salesperson Must Tell by Mike Adams and The Irresistible Consultant's Guide to Winning Clients by David A. Field. So visit audibletrial.com slash business growth, explore the books that are of interest to you, and receive one free audiobook when you sign up for the trial. Today we're speaking with Scott Carter about blockchain and cryptocurrency. So given everything that you've said about it, which I so appreciate that now I feel like I actually understand it, um, why is there so much pushback about it, you know, and so much fear about it? Is it, I mean, what's your sense of that? Well, I, I think one, it, it depends on who the audience is. Clearly, if it is the consumer, there's pushback because it's change and, you know, it's, it's not something that is easy to understand. Um, I, you know, I wasn't there when we moved from actually going from cash and, ch and check writing to credit cards back in the, you know, in the early 60s. But I'm wondering if there was sort of the same resistance to not believing uh -huh. that, you know, credit cards were as legit of a payment as actually handing somebody a $20 bill over the counter. My guess yeah. is it probably was. And that it took a long time from this, you know, through the 70s and the 80s for the adoption of an alternative payment method, even though the other still existed. It still took a long time for us to adopt the, the ease, if you will, of credit cards. So the resistance and, and, and resistance to change for a for people is, it's very real. I mean, you know, you, you ask some great questions like, well, how do you know that it's legitimate on the blockchain? And you know, the, the information is there. Uh, we've, we've gained trustworthiness in our banking system, although I'm not sure that they deserve it. Um, but nevertheless, you know, they, they've been the, they've been the gatekeeper for the last 40 years on validation of who we are, that we have money, that there aren't, um, you know, crimes going on. And, and so we'll, we'll resist, if you will, as a population, uh, the change from that perceived control, if you will, and oversight. But it will happen because 
I think at the core, we want to have control of our money and, and also our data, but we want control of our money. And I think that many individuals recognize that the banks and the governments as stewards of our money right now have not done a good job. Yeah. And therefore, that's what will drive the change. Uh, and the technology enables it for the first time. So the resistance is just our natural instinct to, be, to, to not want something new. The resistance from the banks and from the credit card companies are that it takes power out of their hands. It, yeah. you know, it takes control away from them. Um, the resistance from governments is that, gosh, I don't know what transactions are taking place. You know, it's what, so they, they tend to, I think, overstate the fact that this is only being used by, you know, criminals and underhanded people and drugs. And, uh, but that really isn't the case because every blockchain transaction is an open ledger. I could take you Diane, to an open ledger that shows every transaction that has occurred today where people have, or, you know, entities have transferred tokens from one wallet to another wallet. And, and if the government really wanted to know who owned each of those wallets, they could. So there actually are no secrets on blockchain. Everything is recorded, whereas today that's not the case. So this may sound like a strange question, but, but will this cut down on things like those phishing emails from Nigeria and, you know, I'm in Europe and my wallet got stolen and I just need enough money to get home. Nonsense. People yeah, falling well, to that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, probably not. And the reason no. <laughs> is, and here's why is the population is rightfully so unaware of how blockchain and cryptocurrencies work. So yeah. therefore, uh, you know, it's, it's a terrible thing to say, but, you know, criminals, scammers, and, you know, porn make the most money in the earliest yeah. because the uninformed can, they're, we're gullible. And, and crypto, to some extent, is that way. That's why you have a lot of cryptocurrencies that are introduced that have no real value. But the, the desire that individuals have to become a bazillionaire with no work is yeah. incredible. You know, and if a marketing story is presented strongly enough, they're, they, they're gullible enough to put some money toward it to, because they think they're going to come up with wealth very easily. And that is not the case. But so unfortunately, um, you know, the, the uninformed and the, you know, the suckers of the world are going to get scammed as this thing matures, just like we get scammed today in bank. I mean, it never has changed, yeah. you know, and uh, it, it, because it's not the scammers, it's the gullible nature and the lack of, of insight of individuals that, that creates that market, not the technology. Okay. Rats. I was thinking maybe this, this, because it's, you know, you can see every transaction, maybe this would be something that would be better policing. But it, it, it I will agree. Be, yeah, I think that's a good point. It will be better policing at the, uh, you know, at the government and the institutional level, but it doesn't negate the impulse click that somebody makes when yeah. they see in their email. You know, if, if you yeah. actually took the time to look on the platform and to see the transactions, yeah, you would stop. But not everybody does that. We are, you know, we, we pull the trigger really quickly when we think we're going to make a fast buck. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Um, now, are there, are there other things coming up, you know, around the corner that you think entrepreneurs need to understand, you know, need to be watching out for or getting educated on in order to continue to be successful? Oh, absolutely. I, I, you know, I think that um, if, if there's one thing that I would encourage any entrepreneur, and I try to do it as often as I can, but it's, it's very, you know, it's when, when you're up to your neck in alligators as a small business owner, and you're sitting, yeah. you go from the emotion of, wow, I'm, you know, I know what I'm doing to, oh my gosh, I'm going to be bankrupt all within a 24 hour <laughs> period. Um, you know, sometimes it's hard to pause and get to a quiet spot, 
maybe a cup of coffee or something, and, and think about your business strategically. Think about technology. Think about what's happening around the world as we become a more globalized economy and how that's going to impact your business. Because it will, not only this technology we're talking about today, because it will impact your business. And, uh, and I'd like to quote Steve Jobs here, and, and this is actually going back to 1992, okay? Apple was just starting, he was a young man. And, and he said, you know, there are times when the door opens from a technology standpoint, and then it eventually closes, but the door opens where technology comes together that enables businesses and users to make a quantum leap in how they process things. And then the, the technology window closes again. He said, you've got to have your eyes open for when that quantum leap occurs. And in the context of what he was talking about was before we had Wi-Fi and PDAs and, and this ma mass transfer of data that we do today. And so as entrepreneurs and business owners, we cannot rest on our laurels and think that the way we conduct business today will be the same five years from now or 10 years from now. We'll get outmaneuvered. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, it'll come, it'll look like we've got a cash flow crunch or a loss of business or what have you. But the reality is we may not be adjusting to our businesses as quickly as uh, we're required to, to stay in the lead or keep the advantage we have on our competitors. So yes, absolutely, technology is changing. I gave you an example on my own business, but this particular technology is going to impact every business. Uh, another example is a small company in San Diego, Diane. They handle 95% of the proxy mailings and statements for public companies. Now, this is not buying or selling anything. This is just moving data around. And you and I know that, gosh, when you've got to get out proxies and voting registration requirements and what shareholders own what to get the, the voting rights done on annual meetings, it's a complex uh, data and paperwork nightmare. Yeah. They have moved 100% to having those proxies by shareholder on blockchain. And they have their own token that represents that shareholder. And all of a sudden, all that paperwork and that mailing and that transferring has gone away. He said it is, I, I was talking to the owner, it has streamlined his business in number of people and usage and accuracy by 10. So wow. the, these are the types of things where if you are selling a widget, how do you collect payments? If you are selling, you know, uh, services, how are you prepared to, um, you know, instruct your clients about how crypto will change their service? You have got to stay as an entrepreneur on top of this particular uh, technology and then therefore the technology that unfolds around it as it gets more and more maturity and scale. So you can't just sit there and put your hands over your ears and your eyes and say, if I, if I pretend like it's not happening, it's not happening, right? <laughs> well, that's right. I mean, that was the Kodak, uh, Polaroid, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and Sears Roebuck strategy, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, those, exactly. Those were three monsters <sighs> in their industry, and they're gone. Yeah. yeah. How is that possible? Yeah. Well, exactly what you were saying. They weren't paying attention to what was happening and what was changing. There is no they way Sears Roebuck should have let Amazon beat them. How is that possible? They had all the customers. They, all they had to move was digital. Kodak, Polaroid. I mean, you name them. Think about yeah. the businesses that were the titans 25 or 30 years ago gone today. So in a small way as entrepreneurs, where we're the titans of our little market, don't become Sears Roebuck. Right. <laughs> of today, you know, keep yeah. your eyes open. And, and in fact, you could probably leapfrog your competition if you really spend the time, you know, you could, you could because 
all of your competitors, they're probably going to have their head down just trying to make ends meet. Take just a little time, be a, be a strategist. You could probably leapfrog your competition. And that's, that's where the power comes in. I'm seeing that, by the way, just to emphasize the point, IBM. IBM has been flat on its back for 25 years. Microsoft, Apple, you know, Cisco Systems, they all kind of beat Big Blue where it was the computer technology company. All of a sudden now, Big Blue has jumped in both feet on blockchain and cryptocurrencies because they see it as a way to regain that leadership position in technology that they had up until the mid 80s. And uh, I think that that's a powerful thing. Yeah, that's interesting. I thought they were doing that. I'm really glad you brought that up because I, I remember them going through the struggle and and I thought I had just seen something where uh, it seemed like they were totally back in the mix. That, so, that's right. Wow. Yeah, John Akers in 1985 turned down this young kid to buy his technology. The kid was going to sell it to him for $25 million in, excuse me, in uh, 1982. And John Akers was the CEO of IBM. He said, there's no way it's worth that much. There's no way I'm going to pay that much for it. And the kid said, okay, I'll go and I'll do it on my own. I'll take it public. And that was Microsoft and Bill Gates. with Right. right? And the desktop computer and the apples of the world and the, 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 the move away from mainframes onto desktops occurred and IBM was asleep. Yeah. And so they're another example of how they should be, they should be the trillion dollar company, not Apple. Right, right. And IBM yeah. has been flat. Now, now the technology window is opening. And it's a, the reason why this one is so important, Diane, is, is that it affects how we purchase goods and services. And there have only been three times in our history where we've changed how we purchase goods and services. So it's scale, it's worldwide, and it affects $90 trillion of transactions versus a smaller business change. And, and so that kind of momentous leap and, and market change is an opportunity for businesses to, uh, you know, to garner a piece that they normally didn't have. Right. That's great. And I really appreciate what you said about um, that you imagine this same kind of resistance happened with the credit card, because it really does help put it in perspective that this is a, just another form of payment. And we've done this before and it's been challenging, but we figured it out. So that's right. We figured, I like that. We went from bartering in the 1800s to coinage. In 1933, we went from coinage to paper. I'm sure there was a ton of resistance then. Yeah. And then we went from paper to checks and credit cards in the 60s. We have basically been on that system now since the 60s. And now we're on the precipice, if you will, or the cusp of a new technology change that will be decentralized and digital instead of uh, swiping a card and centralized. So it's... It doesn't change what we buy and whether we go to the store or buy online. What it changes is where does the control reside? Where does the information reside? And uh, how efficient is it? And that's what technology does. So, uh, right. it, yeah, there are going to be winners and losers in this. Yeah. If I were Visa, I would be either having my own token or figuring out who to buy to be the leader in this. Yeah, right. Right. Boy, boy, it makes you wonder the conversations that are going on in those boardrooms. Sure. I mean, they've probably gone from denial to acceptance that it's here and they've got smarter, much smarter people than I am, uh, you know, really in all these major companies they're talking about, they're, tr they're going to figure this out. You know, can we start our own? But if they don't, they'll end up just paying the capital and buying it because they're not going to right. give their position. Right. Right. Gosh. Okay. So I, I am beyond grateful <laughs> for all of this information. Um, and I would love it if you would share with the listeners about your new book, You Got This, because um, it, it's, 
along the same lines. It's about retirement and financial health, um, and that's important to business owners as well, the ones who are planning on doing that. So will you share what the book is about and how people can get it? Absolutely. Uh, you got, thank you for the, the plug. You got this, your million dollar path to financial freedom. You can get it on Amazon. Uh, it's in, in your bookstores or, uh, around the country. Morgan James Publishing uh, brought it to market. Uh, it was just released a couple of months ago, but really what it is, it's a practicum, Diane, on individuals being able to put together a plan to close the gap between where they are for their financial future and where they need to be. And we are in denial. Uh, collectively as a group on how much money it takes to actually retire. And, and you know, Jill's and my, my wife Jill and I wrote this uh, together. Uh, you know, we wanted to, in a small way, give something back to say, look, you, you can take this head on if you focus and work the problem. And don't assume it's just going to go away and don't assume the government's going to take care of you. But you have got to, if you've got 10 years or 15 years to go before you retire, you've got to take very practical, specific steps that gets that portfolio and balance up to a level where you can have the financial freedom and the retirement and the second half of life you deserve. So that's what this book is. We use ourselves as examples, Diane. We, look, we have, um, you know, we've made so many mistakes. There, there are too many to count. You know, as it said, success is a terrible teacher. Uh, failure is where you learn things, right? And we've got yeah. plenty of those where we've made bad investments. We've been overly optimistic. We've missed opportunities. We haven't seen change when it occurs. We wanted to share that in a positive, upbeat way to say, you got this, you can take this, don't go into denial though, and don't wait till too, it's too late. And, and so that's the essence of the book. It's an easy read, it's a good read. It's actually, it has a you know, worksheet within it that at the end result of the book, if you complete it, you'll have defined what your gap is and what you need uh, compared to what you have and put a plan forward to close the, close the gap. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you. And, and as I said, <clears throat> excuse me, thank you so much for sharing all of this information. Now, how can people find you, um, you know, if they want to learn more or learn more about what you're doing? Absolutely. They can, well, they, there are a couple places they can find me. Uh, ScottCarter.com. Again, ScottCarter.com has information on me and blogs and uh, information, et cetera. Information about a couple of the products that I mentioned today, for example, Trident Gold, which is this cryptocurrency backed by gold, they can go to tridentgold.com. And that's, it's like the spear, T-R-I-D-E-N-T, tridentgold.com. And they can get information about cryptocurrencies in general, about this token itself. It's a transactional site. They can purchase it if they're interested. And we walk them through it. So those are the two best places, tridentgold.com and scottcarter.com. Terrific. Thank you. And I'd like to thank the listeners. Guys, you know what? Uh, this was some great information. And if you are like me, which I believe you are, um, you probably now have a better understanding of what's going on here with all the stuff we hear about, the blockchain and the cryptocurrency, and how these things can impact your business. So thanks for tuning in. I'd also like to thank our sponsor. Uh, if you would like to get a free trial and a, of audible.com and a free audiobook when you sign up for that trial, uh, please go to audibletrial.com slash business growth. As always, continue to prosper and be curious. And until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. Are you tired of seeing your teen or young adult struggle on a path that clearly isn't the right fit? Is your teenager confused about which direction to take after high school? The future of work is changing rapidly, and our kids need to know all of the options available after high school so they're empowered to make the choice that is best for them. In each episode, we explore the latest trends that are shaping the opportunities of today and tomorrow. I'm your host, Betsy Jewell, and this is the High School Hamster Wheel Podcast.